Welcome to 321 exams. Today on chemistry, we shall be taking a look at the topic organic compounds. Organic compounds. The objectives of organic compounds, students are expected to, students and candidates are expected to know the following or should be able to, number one, to understand how carbon form, to understand how carbon form to react compounds or how carbon are uh, able to form compounds such as nitrogen and amino acids as well as sulfur. Also, students should be able to understand the idea of catenation Catenation. Catenation is the uh, combination of carbon atoms in straight or branch chain. And then we have classes of organic compounds. Students should be able to understand the classes of organic compounds. Again, the functional groups and the homologous series. Characteristics, properties of organic compounds and of course their uses. The most important aspect as regards to this lesson is that students should also be able to answer questions and that, uh, that they are confronted with. So what is now organic chemistry? That will take us to the definition of organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is the study of carbon compounds occurring naturally excluding the oxides, trioxocarbonates, trioxocarbonate 4 of carbons because they are classified as inorganic compounds. So if we have something like this, carbon 2 oxide, or carb this is carbon 4 oxide rather, carbon 4 oxide, if we have carbon 2 oxide, And also, if we have triazocarbonate, such as such as calcium triazocarbonate, sodium triazocarbonate, or we have uh, all these put together are classified as inorganic compounds. This, they are not referred to as organic chemistry because of uh, the comp composition. Now, but others, others are known as organic compounds. For example, we have uh, CH4. This is methane. We also have C, CH, C2H, or C6. Let's put this. This is H12O, which is carbohydrate. All these are classified as organic compounds. They are unlike the inorganic that I've uh, discussed about now. So, next is the classes, classes of hydrocarbon. What are the classes of hydrocarbon? The class of hydrocarbon, as shown here, hydrocarbons are classified into two main groups, called the hydrocarbons and the non-hydrocarbons. Also, the hydrocarbon is also further divided into two groups, known as the aliphatic and aromatic hydrocarbon. The aliphatic is divided into two parts, called the acyclic and cyclic hydrocarbon. Why in the case of non-hydrocarbon, where it's divided into three main components, called the acidic, basic, and neutral component. Acidic, basic, and then neutral. This is how hydrocarbons are classified. We are more interested in the hydrocarbons, because 
this is the subject matter for today. So we're going to be looking at hydrocarbon, the aliphatic and the aromatic hydrocarbon. And also the aliphatic when it is split into uh, cyclic and cyclic hydrocarbon. So next is reasons for special properties of carbon. Why do we have to take out carbon of all existing elements? What is so special about carbon that we decide to say, okay, carbon is what we're going to be looking at. It has a very important, there are several reasons for that. One, carbon has relatively small carbon atom with four valence electron. Two, it can easily form octet state by sharing its valence electrons. It, its ability to catenate. <clears throat> When we say catenation, we are talking about the ability of carbon to form straight or branch chain, continuous chain with corresponding carbon atoms. And that is what we refer to as to catenate or what we call catenation. Number four, the ease with which the ease with which carbon combines with hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and the halogens. Carbon can easily combine with this these elements to form compounds. And then, still on the reasons for special properties of carbon, it, its ability to form, its ability to form single, double, or triple covalent bonds. This is a very important chemical process that will determine the type of reaction that carbon will further undergo. If carbon should undergo uh, reaction covalent uh, combination with hydrogen, for example. Let's say we have carbon plus uh, two molecules of hydrogen, and we are going to get methane gas. This methane can further undergo other type of reactions. For example, this shows us that this is a saturated hydrocarbon. We're going to be talking about chemical, I mean, chemical properties of this element. Now, in case of this, where we have a saturated hydrocarbon, this type of hydrocarbon can only undergo substitution reaction and not addition reaction. So the presence of a single bond or double bond or triple bond will determine what type of reaction uh, uh, the uh, carbon compound will undergo. So that's why it is a very important component or property of, uh, of carbon atom. The sixth one is Different arrangements of the same atoms within a molecule pro produces a variety of compounds. So they, they can give several types of compounds. So what, these are some of the uh, properties of uh, carbon. Now, next is the characteristics property of organic compounds. Characteristics properties of organic compounds. One. They are mostly covalent and strong because of the carbon-carbon double bond. So if, for example, we have uh, a, a, a carbon compound such as uh, organic compound, rather, C2H6, it means there is there's a bond between carbon atoms and hydrogen. If you see this structure, you discover that the bond that exists between the corresponding hydrogen the corresponding carbon atom. So this bond that exists between these two carbon atoms makes it to be very strong. That is why it is referred to as a, a strong covalent uh, compound. Number two, conductivity. They do not conduct, that is, organic compounds do not conduct electricity. Because why? They do not ionize in water. Hence, they are non-electrolytes. They do not, uh, not all of them actually, but there are some that also exhibit properties of weak electrolytes, such as the arcadoic acids. So they do not ionize in, in water, hence they are non-electrolytes, which do not conduct electricity. However, arcanoic acids form weak electrolytes. So if you, you are confronted with a question and the question goes as uh, like this. Uh, all, all organic compounds do not conduct electricity. 
true or false? Your answer should be false because it's not all. Some inorganic, uh, so, sorry, some organic compounds like arcanoic acids form weak electrolyte because they can partially ionize in water. Now, talking about solubility of organic compounds, they are generally insoluble in water except for those with hydroxy group. Those that have hydroxy groups such as alkanol, the general molecular formula for alkanol is CnH2n plus 1OH, meaning the presence, meaning that one of these hydrogen atoms has been replaced with hydroxide, uh, hydroxide group. And because of this hydroxide group, it can dissolve in water. But they are soluble in non-polar solvent like benzene. So a non-polar solvent like benzene can actually uh, uh, allow organic compound to be dissolved in it. Still on property characteristics, property of organic compounds, the shape of molecules. Covalent bonds are rigid and highly directional. Hence, they have a definite shape. So when you talk about the shape of organic compounds, they will say they have a, a definite shape. Then isomerism. When we say isomerism, what is isomerism? We say isomerism is a phenomenon whereby two or more organic compounds having the same molecular formula, but they have different structural formula. We're still going to take a look at all of them, one at the other as we continue to proceed ahead. Number six, talking about combustion. Most organic compounds are inflammable and burn exothermally in the presence of O2 oxygen to yield carbon dioxide and water. So this process is, is a very good and important process of uh, organic compound, combustion reaction. Combustion reaction usually give two major products. The two major products of combustion reactions are carbon dioxide and water. Very important processes. Very, very important process. So these are the two major processes of, uh, I mean, two products of combustion. Then stability in presence of heat. They are mostly unstable in, the, in, in heat at about 500 degrees Celsius and decompose to form smaller compounds. So they can boil in a melting point. They have low boiling point and uh, melting point compared to inorganic compounds. This is due to their relative weak intermolecular bonds. What do we mean by relative weak in the bonds that exist within the carbon atom is weak, so they can easily disintegrate. So let's take a look at structure of some structures of hydrocarbons. Some structures of hydrocarbon. Let's look at what we have here. This is methane. Methane has this structure. This is ethene. Ethene belongs to a group called the akin, akin compound, and has the formula of C2H4. So ethene has a double bond. So also we have, uh, let's take a look at two major compounds that are a concept of isomers. When we talk of isomerism, having the same formula with gene. Now let's take a look at this, this C3 or C4, let's take it. Let's take butene. Butane has a general formula of C4, H10, meaning that butane can be 
written like this. The number of hydrogen are 10. This can be referred to as N butene, meaning have normal structure of butene. With this, this brings us to the end of our lesson. Do hope to see you in another.